please appreciate that I went through 900 of my Instagram photos and the captions to make this video. <laughs> Hello, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, then welcome. I don't know why I did that wave. I hate intros, they're very awkward. So I was watching a video by Francesca Perks the other day where she exposed her Instagram feed. So she basically went through and essentially roasted herself. So I don't know if this is like an actual trend that people do or if Fran started it, I have no idea, but that is where I got my inspiration. But yeah, obviously this video is, I mean, I hope it's gonna be entertaining, but I'm mostly doing it because I think it's important. I don't like flat out lie on Instagram or I don't try to deceive people. I'm not like living a double life or anything like that. I think with me, it's more like I've just left the truth out sometimes or like, I don't know, there's certain things where you're just, you're not gonna put that in an Instagram caption. I thought this might be interesting to show that life ain't all as like peachy as my Instagram might make it seem. I just put Remy down to nap and I can already hear him waking up and it's literally been not even 10 minutes. So we love toddlers. Okay, so this first one is, is very harmless. It's just funny. This is a very old school like pre-blogger photo. I'm gonna move here so I can put the pictures here. Yeah, it's a very old school photo. I think this is from like 2015 or 2016 or something. It's very harmless, but this was kind of when Instagram was just starting to be a thing when like avocado on toast. Do you remember like those Instagram days where it was all about like brunch and stuff? I did not eat this breakfast. I made it with the best of intentions, but I hate rye bread. It was my first time trying rye bread. Rye bread is shit, it tastes like shit. It shouldn't be called bread because it doesn't taste like bread. So I remember just scraping the avocado and mushrooms off and eating them. I didn't even touch the grapefruit because I knew prior to making this breakfast that I didn't like grapefruit. I'm so much less wasteful now, but I think back then in general, it was kind of like, I mean, people probably still do this now, but it was back when like, you would see things and be like, oh my God, that's so Instagrammable. Like there were definitely times where, and this was when I had like a hundred followers, but there were times where I would like buy a cupcake because I knew it would look good on Instagram. Yeah, it was those days. Okay, this one was back when I used to do like five festivals a summer. I used to go to so many festivals and I was only like 16, 17, so I couldn't really afford to be doing as many festivals as I was. And I couldn't always afford the right travel. I couldn't afford food and drink at festivals. I was just a bit of a mess. So this was when me and my friend Ben went to Why Not Festival for the day to see Moose Blood. It was before all the but we literally, between us, I remember we were both broke as fuck, like we could barely afford to drink. And between us, we just took a pop-up tent. We didn't take sleeping bags, pillows, any kind of blanket. There was literally nothing in our pop-up tent apart from ourselves. And I think we maybe had like a backpack each. It was the most uncomfortable night of my life. It was horrible. It was, it just went on for so long. It was so cold. It was just, the floor was so hard. I don't know why we did it. I, I still, to this day, I'm like, I don't know why. I don't know why we did that. I would probably like break a hip now if I tried to sleep on the floor. But obviously on Instagram, we're having a great time. Okay, for this, I didn't even know which Summer in the City photo to pick. So here's an array of them. This was the first year I went to Summer in the City and it was horrible it was one of the worst like social events i think i've ever been to there's so much i'm, I'm gonna try not to go too far into it just because i don't know who's gonna be watching this but i stayed with my well one of my best friends at the time or who i thought was one of my best friends at the time she just decided she hated me that weekend just absolutely i still to this day have no idea what happened i remember like she didn't hang out with me all weekend and then when i got home she'd blocked me on everything i was baffled to be honest so i remember spending the weekend with a bunch of people who i'd like spoken to on twitter but we weren't really friends it was kind of like it was weird because i'd only been doing youtube for like six months i thought i had all these youtube friends because i spoke to so many people from youtube but not really in my head i had a bunch of friends but then when it came to meeting up with them all i was like this is awkward and i just didn't really know what to say i've always been quite a shy person and i think Sitsi is so intense and there are so many, I mean like we're YouTubers, like on YouTube people tend to be quite extroverted personalities. It was just horrible. I remember just feeling awkward all weekend, uncomfortable. It was not a good time. And I think cause I have resting bitch face, I think a bunch of people that I met probably just thought I was a dick. Uh, yeah, not great. So I just felt really lonely. In fact, this picture, um, I went to the YouTube space launch party by myself. That was just, there was, I mean, there were loads of cool YouTubers there who I've watched for like my whole life, but I obviously didn't speak to anyone. And I was just like drinking the free alcohol, like 
this is not fun. So it sucked and I felt really disillusioned with YouTube. I was like, maybe this isn't for me. Maybe I don't have the right kind of personality to be doing this. But yeah, on Instagram, here's me with all my friends. Here's me with a subscriber. Here's me looking fine as hell, let's not lie. Here's me at a YouTube launch party. Like I tried to make it look so cool and it wasn't. Most of the people I met in that picture are really nice and the following year we got on really well, but just at the time, it just wasn't happening. This actually feels really good. I don't know why. I feel this is like therapeutic. <laughs> this was Sitsi the following year and I just wanted to let you know that I had a happy ending with Sitsi because this was the last time I went. This was the last time I think most of my friends went. I got a big Airbnb with a bunch of my friends. We, we all were a lot closer by this point and I had a lot of fun. It was actually one of the best weekends like ever. Very wholesome. Just wanted to let you know there was like a happy ending. <laughs> I don't have an issue with it and I don't have an issue with anyone I've actually ever met on YouTube uh, apart from no, that's a lie. I, I do. Okay, this photo, it's not amazing. It's not one of the best I'm engaged pictures I've ever seen, but it could have been so much worse because Danny proposed to me when I had chipped nail varnish, like so chipped. I mean, pretty much 90% of the time I have chipped nail varnish, but obviously when you are engaged and you want to upload the photo, it's not ideal. So I had chipped nail varnish and I had no makeup on just because it was a bit of a rush day. I think I'm gonna do our engagement story one day, but yeah, not today. So I had to go into the toilets of the bar that we were in and paint my nails and put on my makeup. And then I took this photo and the lighting was really bad, but yeah, I was engaged. So I didn't care too much, but yeah, I had to paint my nails for this picture. Um, while Danny just sat there like, well, this is a fun engagement. <laughs> to be honest, shame on him for proposing to me when my nails look like shit, but many useless different conversation for a different day. I'm joking, I love him, please don't marry me. Okay, so this is when obviously Remy was born. Pretty much every photo from my Instagram for that first year had a horrible story behind it. Okay, it didn't. I, I have weird mixed feelings about that year because I was massively in denial about the fact that I had postnatal depression. I wouldn't address it. So I just thought that like life was shit and I wasn't, and yeah, this is just, I'm not gonna get too deep now, but. It was a bad time. But yeah, this photo, I mean, to be fair, Remy's so cute. That day, so that photo was taken in Temple Donuts. It was the first time we went and we've been waiting to go there forever. The donuts are not cheap. You know, it was like a big treat for us. And we managed to get a seat and we sat down on the sofa and Remy like threw up everywhere and it stank. I think that's an important one to address because I get a lot of credit for being so open and honest about like the struggles of motherhood. And I am. But also, like, I guess it's kind of like there's a time and a place sometimes. Like, I don't want every single thing I post to be like, today was a really shit day. Like, I don't want to always focus on the negatives. And especially back then, because I was so depressed. If I opened that can of worms, I wouldn't have ever stopped talking about, like, all the bad stuff. So I think, weirdly, I think I've been a lot more open about how hard it is since I stopped being depressed because I think it's easier to talk about that time when you're out of it, if that makes sense. Just know that like a lot of people probably looked at my photo. In fact, I know for a fact, a lot of people looked at my photos back then and were like, oh my God, Remy makes us so broody. Oh, you guys are such a cute family, blah, 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 blah. And so I just wanted to let you know, it was a pretty horrible time to be perfectly honest. I can hear him laughing to himself right now. I'm gonna go get him in a minute. So I'm gonna be quick. Uh, cause he's obviously just planning on not napping today. Okay, this one was the first ad that I ever did. And I'm sure you can tell from the photo anyway, but that puree all over Remy's face, he did not put it there. I was dunking my fingers in his food cause the ad is for like a clean, like to clean them up spray. Um, <laughs> I'm a great blogger. So because the ad is for cleaning, I felt like I had to make him look really dirty. Uh, and usually when he would eat back then, he would get it all over himself. And on this one day, he was eating so tidily. And I was like, what, what, why, why? So I remember just dunking my hands in his pure range, rubbing it all over his face. I put some on his forehead and Danny was just like, what has become of you that you are doing this for an Instagram photo? Uh, and he's right, to be fair. No harm done, it was only a bit of food. It's just uh, a bit ridiculous that I did that for for the gram. Okay, this one is our first Christmas together, like all three of us. I had had gastroenteritis for the week leading up to it, and Remy had been with my mum, and basically, 
all of us had ended up getting gastro like i think it was remy first and then as he sort of got over it i got it so then we sent remy to my mum's house and then my mum and my sisters got it and we were all just poorly for christmas and it was horrible like if you've ever had gastroenteritis you will know it is the worst thing ever and then i just gotten better like literally christmas morning i woke up and was like oh my god i feel better and then i drank a bottle of wine that i think basically we didn't store it properly i don't fully know what happened but it was off i didn't really know that wine could like go off that easily but it was off and i drank it and i got really ill on christmas day and i couldn't even have our christmas dinner which was really sad because danny makes really good roast potatoes it's just been a really rubbish year and then i was just like it's the christmas break everyone thinks that christmas is like this magical time and you're just like chilling for a week and instead i was like throwing up and then i couldn't even enjoy christmas day and i was like obviously because it's me but we got a lovely a lovely christmas family photo anyway so it's all right isn't it another sponsored post this one's for palmers i just get really stressed when sponsored posts don't go well because a lot of the time you've already like promised the brands that you're gonna get a nice photo and then when you don't it's like really frustrating and i think especially with me because i almost always need remy to be in the picture with me it is so difficult to let a child know that you need them to sit still because he's a baby. This is why we shouldn't use our babies as props online. I get it now. I'm not very comfortable in front of the camera. Danny's not like, I mean, he's not, a, you know, he doesn't spend as much time on Instagram as I do. So he doesn't really know things like lighting and angles and stuff like that. So I remember this day I was just getting so bothered because every photo was just wrong. Either I hated how I looked or Remy was moving or the logo for Palmer's wasn't like in shot or something. And I remember just being like, forget it, forget it. I'm just gonna have to email them and say, I can't do it, like this is ridiculous. And then like 20 minutes later, we'd all calm down and we sat down again and we got this photo, we got the shot. Sponsored posts are stressful to say the least. It's a very cute photo. I remember a lot of people being like, a really nice photo and i was like thank you it made me want to cry when we took it this one's not really exposing myself it's just kind of funny because it's i mean it's actually one of my most liked photos bloody hell so everyone was really happy for us because we just got a house um still renting but basically if you didn't follow that whole saga we spent like six months trying to rent somewhere um and because we were were both just starting our new jobs at the time you kind of I don't know it's a bit confusing but they, they always want you to have been in your job for a certain amount of time and we were both only just starting our new jobs originally we tried to move to Sheffield then we couldn't find anywhere there so then we tried to move to Nottingham literally couldn't get in anywhere like every time we applied for a house it got rejected and then we finally got this house and I posted this picture and then within two months we had moved out again because it basically leaked every single day damp water damage leaking through the windows leaking through the walls remy was getting poorly we couldn't sleep in our bedroom it stank it smelled damp and warm and horrible and the landlord wouldn't do anything about it so within two or three months we were in and out and it's just funny that this is like one of my most popular photos and that i was like oh my god we got a house like is everyone happy for us Hmm. so that's it luckily everything from the past six months or so has been very real i couldn't find anything to expose in the past six months i hope you enjoyed this video it wasn't really exposing myself as in like like i said at the beginning i wasn't like telling lies or anything it was more like here's a bunch of times i was actually really sad or lonely or angry or stressed and i didn't tell instagram i think it's mostly just because the world doesn't need more of that like no one really needs to know if I've had a bad day. Like occasionally I will mention something that's like stressing me out or upsetting me online, but generally I don't really need to be sharing that with the world. So I just kind of wanted to keep it real by showing you the times that weren't as peachy as they might have seemed. I hope you liked this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you did. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.